Hello everybody, welcome to Speculative Work. I'm James Aaron, I'm a science fiction writer, and this podcast is my author diary of my work, goals, fumbles, and lessons, so hopefully you don't make the same mistakes I did or that I do. Uh, Welcome to episode 7. This week I thought I would talk about tracking expenses, since I just spent most of today tracking down all the various bits of money that I spent in 2018 to support my writing habit. I have to pay taxes this year, which is a good thing because it means I made money, but I would also like to not have to pay $1,500 in taxes if I don't have to, um, or at least be able to decide how much that I need to pay. So I'm looking for ways to reduce my tax liability, and I definitely spent money last year. Uh, I just learned a few things about probably making this whole process a lot easier. So it's late, we just got the baby to bed, and I'm gonna do my best not to sound beat down and exhausted. I got some coffee, uh, even though it's late at night, but um, we'll be good. So first, some updates. Work complete for this last week. I wrote 11,308 words, and I only cut a few things from uh, my work in progress, and Basically, the the daily streaks have been working really well for me. Um, Today has not gone as I would have hoped uh, since I spent most of the day filling out spreadsheets. Um, What was really interesting to me as I was filling out the spreadsheets was I found that, you know, basically I'm hunting through like my Amazon account because I, all the various places that I, that I buy things, um, you know, between Amazon, eBay, um, money that I spent on podcast services, mailer light, things like that. I was really focused the whole time I was doing that. Like I never felt the urge to click away and go look at Facebook or surf Reddit or whatever, uh, which was really interesting to me. I found myself thinking about that after like three hours had gone by that, you know, for some reason, like being focused on that kind of nug work task that doesn't require a whole lot of creative, you know, input from my brain it was really easy to focus. So I'm gonna give that a little bit more thought and figure out like maybe how how I can do that same thing for writing because I really feel like my writing comes in pulses. You know, I'll write 200 words, 300 words, reach the end of like a scene or the end of a thought leading up to a scene and then immediately I wanna click off and go look at something else. You know, and so I waste time, build up like a little bit of mental energy that I need to go back and write again and then go back and have to get back in a flow state and do it again. And so I feel like I waste a lot of time doing that. So that was interesting, but, but yeah, that, that was a lot of what I was doing today. Um, but I have a really solid spreadsheet for all 12 months of the year. I've got everything on a summary page. So it adds up how much I spent and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, and then this is something I'm even, I'm trying to get ahead of the game because I don't actually have to turn this into my accountant until uh, probably end of this month, but it gives me time to think about stuff that I may have missed. And already, I, like I realized I, I signed up for Joe Solari's basic business class for authors and uh, I'd forgotten to put that in there. So I'll, I'll get, you know, those things added in as I give, give myself some time to uh, think about the numbers and whatnot. So got that done. That was a big deal um, on my list of things to do this week. And I'm going to talk about why I want an accountant in a second here and why it might may or may not be, you know, the right decision for you. Um, I did a bunch of reading this week. And one of my goals for um, 2019 is to do more reading. But, you know, as Atomic Habits talks about, like, don't say I want to read more. That's, you know, that's not a good way to accomplish a goal. You need to set aside the time to do the thing you want to do and then, say I will read one page or I will read half a story or whatever. So the first step for me was I wanted to read more of kind of just current short SF. So I got a subscription to the magazine of fantasy and science fiction, which I've always enjoyed quite a bit. And um, it's a really good value for what you get. I mean, you get like 300,000 words of fiction every month. It's, it's actually kind of difficult to read all of it. So I read, um, read two stories this week. Um, I continued listening to Revolt of the Public by Martin Gurry, which uh, now he's moved on from kind of political disruption caused by uh, networked humans, as he calls them, um, to the disruption of scientific authority and how things like uh, climate science and other, you know, 
statistical based information has really been disrupted by the prevalence of information that's available to people and how we have a difficult time finding authority in any given subject. Uh, so people basically lose trust in the whole system. So I can kind of see where he's going with this. And again, it ties into the thesis of um, another book I talked about, The Future of Violence, which again gets to how technologies of disruption make it easy for you know one person to act against the state and there's really nothing the government can do to protect you from that so these are just really interesting things that are all kind of like these different books i've been reading recently are kind of tying a lot of you know near future technology together um so in fact i just I, i'll link to a, an article i read uh today that was linked in hacker news talking about how dark nets like the silk road have moved to messenger apps, you know, encrypted messenger apps. And then they're actually have gone back to uh, like using dead drops and having like this very intricate system of dead drops where you might only have a dead drop that's used. You know, a dead drop would be where if you leave something, you know, behind a brick and a wall or something and people know that's an identified location, someone would be told when to go there, they go there, they reach behind the brick and they find whatever it is they wanted to buy. Well, okay, that's a system with a lot of uh, you know, inherent problems there, but what if we combine that with drones or disposable drones or um, you know, other things that as, as these technologies get less and less expensive and we de decentralize the, you know, in this case, a, a black market or gray market economy, but we tie it to a technology and there's really no way for the government to stop that. <laughs> so <laughs> these are all really interesting things that, um, I don't know, my reading tends to be leading towards recently. I also started reading Blackfish City by Sam Miller, which is, um, reminds me a lot of, uh, was it the, the Kraken by China Mieville? Um, I really like the Mieville book, and this one is, uh, so far it's taken me a little longer to get into it. You know, Mieville is such a dense, you know, weird writer with so much crazy uh, imagery. Um, and this book is trying to be more kind of like climate collapse, not near future, more like 200, I guess relatively near future. Um, and so far it's kind of reminding me of why, maybe it's just the mood I'm in. I want to read stuff that's more escapist. Maybe it's because of the nonfiction that I'm reading right now, but I want to read things that are enter that, that give me great ideas, but are also just entertaining. Like I kind of just want an adventure I can grab onto and have fun with that and then give me some other ideas along the way. And so far it's just, the book is kind of, you know, I'm only a good quarter of the way into it, but it's kind of beating me down. So this book was highly reviewed. So I'm, I'm gonna keep, you know, plugging away at it. Um, I also got a subscription to Locus Magazine and I've got some ideas about that. That one in really interesting thing about the Locus Magazine, which ties into, I think the recent Authors Guild survey that came out is how non-represented uh, indie publishing or new publishing is in that publication. And so I want to, you know, read it some more to get a better um, idea about this, but it's something that I've been thinking about uh, a bit. And, and I don't know, I'll talk more about that. I think maybe, maybe in later episodes. Um, I did not send out an email newsletter this last week. I just, things kept getting in the way. Um, the writing was more important and I was actually, you know, I averaged at least 1500 words a day. And some days I had some good 300 word, 300, 3000 word days. Um, so if I get the newsletter done next week, I'll, I'll do that. It's not super high my priority, but I do want to be somewhat consistent with it. So I'll keep, keep plugging away. Um, I recorded a sentence to paragraph podcast episode with my friends, Molly and Daryl Lynn, and that went well. We'll be getting that, those up soon. Um, we also have a backlog to to do, and those podcasts go with a local nonprofit here in Eugene called Word Crafters, and so we basically just talk about writing and uh, give editing tips and things like that. And it's kind of aimed at uh, at new writers as well, kind of like this one, but instead of just listening to me, you get three writers. So um, I'll send I'll have more updates on that. Um, streaks the streaks are working really well. I would really recommend this if you're struggling at all with getting things done every day. Uh, just the act of like opening up the app on my phone and typing that I, I did each of these things each day is really motivating me to get them done. Like I find myself thinking about it if I haven't gotten it done. And it's one of those deals where rather than sitting on the couch watching TV, it's like, okay, get up and go do this. And so I've done that. And so dumb things like 
take vitamins every day and, you know, drink water every day <laughs> are really working um, so that I can, I can keep my streak up. So I would recommend that if you are struggling with any of your New Year's systems that you have been trying to implement. Um, the app I'm using on Android is called Goal Tracker, and it's, it's free and it was highly rated. and it, It's pretty, I mean, it's bare bones, but it works really well. So, okay, what I wanted to talk about this week is accounting. And I don't talk about it a, a huge amount, but I had kind of a, a break in my sort of relationship with publishing. So I, I ran a small, well, I was part of a small publishing company from like 2000 until it finally ended in 2008. And it was kind of a thing that never was designed to make money at all. We did like zines and we did, um, we did do perfect bound stuff. And it was just when we had money, we would print books and then we would sell books at events and things like that, which is where we made, uh, you know, made the most money. Or we would just give the books to authors and authors would sell, sell them at events and that's how they got paid. So there wasn't really a whole lot of accounting going on. It wasn't an LLC. It was basically just a collection of writers that when we had something to publish, we would figure out how to publish it. And we were selling books on Amazon and it was really right before the Kindle store started. And I stopped doing that in 2008. Um, I had paid for a couple books on a credit card, ran up about $6,000 in credit card debt, and just couldn't really do that anymore. So wanted to pay that off. But I started working, you know, I, I kind of like based on that experience, I, I wanted to do something as far as starting my own business, but I wasn't quite sure what. And then I had a friend that approached me with the idea of starting a craft distillery. And here in Oregon, you know, at that time in 2009, you know, it's still, people are still starting craft distilleries, but Oregon has a pretty, uh, I would say, easy legal system to start a distillery. And, you know, now that we've got legalization of marijuana, like o the OLCC, the Liquor Control Commission is the same agency that manages marijuana, but they, they also have, you know, they're the ones that do distilleries and have made it easier to start a distillery. And, you know, looking at it, it seemed like uh, something I would enjoy doing. And, um, and yeah, we, we started on the idea. Um, my original partner bowed out. I got a different partner. Um, we worked on that business from 2009 until 2013 when I kind of ran into the same thing, like just ran up too much debt doing it. We weren't making money. Um, and I just had to, I couldn't do it anymore. And so actually what happened was rather than dissolving the business, um, we kind of parted ways with equal amounts of debt. And my previous partner continued and the business still exists to this day. Um, I just went like one of the things that I'm excited about this year is like paying off all my debt. And part of that debt is from that business. Well, one of the reasons that that debt has really weighed on me is I never felt like we did a good job of accounting for anything like as far as we didn't get an accountant from the start once we didn't have an accountant and my partner and I were not communicating very well it was it was difficult to track expenses it was difficult to work out of you know two people out of one account uh, all these things were just really a huge source of stress for me and I know a lot of people will you know we're in a time when you can pretty much do your taxes for free based on what your income level is you know, most writers will probably be at that income cap, depending on what you're doing. Um, but it's pretty important to me to at least start working with an accountant so I can get systems in place so I'm doing the right thing because I want to be doing this writing career for as long as possible. And I don't want to end up killing myself by owing taxes because I've already, I've been in that boat before. You know, I paid off a tax bill that I had from the distillery in 2013 and had to go through this whole, this whole thing of like working on a payment plan with the IRS. And what I will say about that is if, you know, don't be afraid of the IRS. Uh, they're much easier to work with than apparently they were, you know, 10 years ago or something. Um, you know, they worked with me, we set up a payment plan, I got it done, but it just killed me to have made mistakes that I probably would not have owed as much money um, if I had got an accountant from the start. I mean, granted, a, a distillery, the amount of money that we were dealing with was very different than what your average uh, author or small, you know, small publishing company is dealing with. You know, to make a book, you can make a book for 
fifteen hundred dollars, uh, not paying yourself technically until you know you start the royalties start coming in. You know, we were talking about I don't know the original business loan was you know thirty thousand dollars, so it was just I don't want to I don't want to repeat those mistakes. <laughs> so I just the reason I talk about this is because I was I was talking to some friends at work, and as soon as I mentioned that I had talk to an accountant, the first thing they said was, oh, you don't need an accountant. You can just do this stuff yourself. You can go to LegalZoom and get the paperwork and you can file these things yourself. And and yes, that's true. I could. But um, I own a house. I want to, I'm looking at some legal structures to maybe make my wife an employee and some things like that. So for me at this point, uh, an accountant is the right thing to do. But I had my initial meeting with the accountant. I really felt good about her and she's worked with some other writers and uh, self-employed folks. So she had a lot of great knowledge on how to maximize the business. But uh, she, one of the things she told me is that if I, you know, depending on how much I do myself, that really re- any, anything I can do to reduce the amount of work she does basically just reduces the cost, you know? So if I get everything set up like this first year, I'm not using QuickBooks, but I will be moving to QuickBooks. So getting all the expenses listed out, getting, you know, everything that I could possibly do to begin with is going to just make it that, you know, less expensive when the time comes. Like I expect this to cost probably at least 400 bucks to do our personal taxes and the business taxes. But to me, it's worth it to get these systems set up like they should be. Uh, So that's why that's important to me. I realize that you know, your experience might be different and you might not be gun shy like, like I am. But I, one of the things that I've really learned in business is that, um, if you can really find trusted people to help you with something, then don't be afraid to lean on them. And the thing is like valuable advice is going to cost you money. Like that, that's just, it is what it is. And what I would say is don't ever be afraid to talk, to mention the money up front. And this is one of the things that really impressed me about this accountant was I was just like, when I, as soon as I asked, like, okay, what are we looking at for uh, fees and things like that? She told me, uh, you know, basically it's an hourly rate. And she then immediately let me know how we could work together to maybe reduce that. And that felt pretty good to me. Now, come May or June, I could be telling you a different story about how it didn't work out so well with this person. But for now, I feel pretty good about it. Um, so I, I think that as long as you're upfront about, what you want and what you can pay and things like that, then uh, all people can do is tell you no. And then you go to a different person and see how you feel about them. And if none of that works within the uh, price range you've got, then maybe you need to, you know, go the uh, the TurboTax route. Um, and if that's the case, then there is a lot of other, you know, free resources to help with business accounting and things like that. Because I will say one thing about the author business is that it just it is not as complex as other businesses. So it is definitely something that you can wrap your mind around uh, as long as you're not doing a lot of carry forwards and things like that. Like it's all pretty much cash basis and, um, you know, depending on how you set things up and conceptualize things, it is not super difficult. One of the things that was different for me this year is and I I was really pleased when I talked to the accountant. I told her like my, my big goal this year is to pay off this debt so that um, because I'm basically a sole proprietor, any of the money that, that I'm making from the books basically just comes into my, my account, right? And so that means I take that money and I either buy stuff or I pay off, you know, pay off bills. Um, but what that means is basically I'm, well, I'm not paying quarterly taxes. Technically I should, but I don't necessarily, I'm not. Um, I am going to owe taxes at the end of the year unless I can come up with some expense, you know, some business expenses to offset that tax rate. So, but what we talked about, because I want to, I'm I'm looking at, I will start an LLC and I probably will um, file as an S corp because I'd like to make my wife an employee um, because she's unemployed right now with the baby. Um, That's something we're looking at, but those are all decisions that, you know, you could make on your own. Um, I would just say definitely, um, you know, look for trusted resources to, to assist with that and get different, you know, plenty of different opinions. So what I did for this year, since I was not using QuickBooks is basically set up everything in a Google doc and I did it by the month. And then, uh, basically as simple as I could do it, you know, the date of the transaction, um, how much it was, what the, who the vendor was, and then, what category it would fall into. And I tried to make everything as simple as possible. And this is one place where I think 
depending on what the accountant tells me, I may need to drill down a little bit on what my categories are, but I basically just went with, um, I think five categories. So I had, you know, equipment, which is things I use to do the job. So, you know, if I bought a laptop, if I bought software, if, um, you know, something I, something I use to do the job, the, the lapel mic I'm using to record right now, that kind of thing. Um, I am going to try and write off my home office that I work in. So I've got my expenses related to utilities and things like that. Um, that was one thing the accountant was helping me with. So we'll see how that turns out. Money that I spent on marketing was another category. So for me, because I don't do a lot of marketing, that was things like MailerLite, uh, MailChimp, Patreon, I put in marketing because I do, um, I subscribe to a number of folks on Patreon. And for me, that's about, you know, building relationships, but also getting access to that information. And because I use it as a networking tool, I figured marketing is probably the best place to put that. Uh, but maybe it would fit better in research, which is the other category I have. And one of the things that I realized in going through this is that I buy a heck of a lot of books. So and most, I mean, the good thing is that it's not like I'm buying books that are not science fiction. I buy a lot of science fiction books. I buy a lot of nonfiction and science fiction. Um, and so that goes under research. So between, you know, Kindle, print, and audiobooks, that went into research. Um, I didn't put any movies in there. I did buy some movies, but I think I'd be, it'd be kind of difficult to explain that. Although I do buy a lot of science fiction movies. Like pretty much if there's a science fiction movie that... I don't already have, um, I'm probably going to pick it up in one form or another because I want to study the story and the visuals and, and all that good stuff. I also, I buy a lot of art books because I love uh, to look at the art and see how, you know, a scene was set up, what it looks like, if there's a description of, you know, a character in armor or weaponry or things like that. Like I picked up the, the, pre, the, the video game that came out, I think in 2017, The New Prey, that one, the art style in that was just gorgeous. And so that's a great source of inspiration. Same thing with Mass Effect, uh, Dead Space. Uh, the Wol I picked up the Wolfenstein 1 and 2 because those are just gorgeous. There's just so much in there that you can, you know, if you're stumped at all on how to describe something or explain something or think about a scene, I love to just page through those art books and get, a, uh, get some ideas. So those are all things that I use for research. Um, and... <clears throat> Just, uh, well, I'll go into this in a second here. But then, uh, and then the other category was travel uh, and conferences because I, tra I did travel for the 20 Books to 50K conference last year. And then this year that's coming up, I'm looking at two, actually three different cons that I'll be going to. Um, I don't know, I was going to go to Space Coast in Cape Canaveral, Florida. And I was just looking at the the hotel and the the flights were going to run us about five grand because I really wanted to take my family. So we'll see. We'll see about that. <laughs> but um, that was something I'm really, I'm really hoping to do. I would love to go to Cape Canaveral. I've never been able to do that. I've been to Florida a couple times, even Orlando, but was never able to get over to Cape Canaveral to see everything that's out there. So, um, so we'll see if we can make that happen. So those are the the five categories that I was working with: equipment, home office, marketing research and travel slash conference. Um, I have not busted into TurboTax recently to see how it breaks them down, but those are the things that, um, that I'm working with now. And I'll, I might, I'll do an update if I do end up getting some feedback on these and if I need to drill down to do something uh, different than, than the way I'm doing it. The one thing I was kind of not sure about was software and how like software, especially subscriptions might fit into that. Cause I know there's, you know, if we do, carry forward a depreciation on certain things. Cause I bought two, I upgraded my PC this year. And then I also bought a, uh, a laptop that was kind of spendy. So that was like the bulk of what I spent last year. Um, and so that I guess potentially could be depreciated over some years, but I probably won't do that. I don't know. We'll see. That's what I hope the accountant will help me with. So, <laughs> so the other thing that was really time consuming was having these charges spread over different accounts. And so I use PayPal, I have uh, a credit card, and then actually, I guess I have two credit cards I use and, and PayPal. I was having a really difficult time going through the transactions um, on the, the cards. So I actually ended up going back 
to because I tend to shop in like one you know three places if it's not local then it tends to be um, Best Buy uh, for most of the electronics that I buy um, Amazon also electronics but books for the most part and then eBay for other random small things so I was able to basically just pull up each of those accounts for the year and then scroll through and look at you know what I had purchased and anything that could be related to the business so any anything like a hard drive um, a card reader an SD card uh, I mean really that's one of the interesting things about about this business is that it is all tied to the writing like that I pretty much have the computers so that I can do things like you know write um, you know I'm, I'm even thinking about it now I bought a keyboard on massdrop.com and I didn't put that on there but I I've gone through a bunch of different keyboards laptops I tend to be you know, Jeff Vandermeer will say, don't fetishize your writing instruments, but I do tend to try a lot of different things, especially back in August when I was really struggling. When the baby, you know, was brand new and wasn't sleeping at all, I was trying just a bunch of different things to get Vesta burning out. And so different keyboards, I was writing on my Alpha Smart for a while, my Neo 2, and, and it, you know, just different things. And so not only did I realize like I need to track these things in different places, but it also helps me see, you know, hey James, you need to cool your jets on these gadgets that you're buying. Uh, Cause I tend to, oh, it's less than a hundred bucks. That's fine. And then I realized like I did that, you know, three times over the course of four months. And that's, you know, have I used those things again? The nice things about keyboards is I can pretty much sell them on eBay or Reddit and I'll at least get my money back. But, um, but not everything is like that. You know, a lot of stuff is just gadgets that, I don't know. I try and make sure I'm using it. So, so I basically went through each of those stores, looked for anything that was related to the writing business, and then tracked it that way. So I can get a sense by the month of what I spent, where I spent it. And then as I'm doing that, it helps jog my memory about the different things. And so my next step is actually going to be to get the the monthly QuickBooks, which it looks like at my... My level of use will be about 20 bucks a month. Um, I'm already paying 20 bucks a month for Photoshop, which I'm kind of stuck in. I really don't use Photoshop that often. But as, as if you've signed up for Adobe, like really think about that if you think you need Photoshop because they'll lock you in for a year and then they, do not, they do not remind you when it's time for the renewal. And so you'll find yourself in yet another year. Um, but then I also found like I had signed up, I had completely forgotten about the fact that I was paying for Amazon Photos, which is a useful service, but that was 60 bucks that I'd forgotten about. And now I'm even thinking about the fact that I didn't, I use uh, some extended storage on Google Drive and I need to put that in there as well. So all those kind of things are kind of jogging my mind to get that stuff written down. But with QuickBooks, I really want to be much better about every month reconciling everything so I'm not in this place at the end of 2019 trying to remember everything that I did. And, and also I'd like to get better notes down because I, I have pretty good notes about all these various things and why I put it in there, but um, I could be better at it. So I think when it comes to this kind of accounting, as writers, like you might not think that this is something that uh, you're good at or it comes easy. You know, I'm a creative. This is business stuff. It's hard for me. Well, the more information you give yourself, the easier it will be. And And for me, I'm the kind of person that and this is how I knew when things were going bad with the distillery is if I didn't want to look at something, I knew it was causing me anxiety. So if I didn't want to look at my personal checking account or I didn't want to look at the business checking account or, you know, our invoices that hadn't been paid or even what I owed, things like that. Well, then I knew that was a problem. And I feel much better if I know exactly how much money I have and exactly how much money I've spent. And at least for this year where I can look at these numbers and say, okay, this is what I spent. I kind of feel like I probably overspent in some areas. Well, for next year, I can really try and, you know, cut that back and, and save money. Or look at places where, you know what, I actually didn't spend as much money on books as I thought I had. <laughs> um, I've run out of room in my library to hold books. But when it comes down to it, like if I'm looking for ways to, you know, get some expenses to offset revenue um, or to offset profits, I mean, I... That's one place where I could do that, I suppose. So whatever it takes to help you feel comfortable with tracking these things, I would recommend that you do it. Find a friend who it comes easy to them 
and buy them a six pack and get them to sit down and, and help you set up a system so that it's easy. You know, if QuickBooks is a bridge too far, then maybe Google Drive is what it is. And and just just the fact that you're recording these things every month, you know, or coming up with a, with a system with an accordion file. So if you do have paper receipts, you're saving those receipts. That will make things so much easier when the time comes to do your taxes and make sure the business is running effectively. And it'll save you money because if you need to hand these things off to an accountant, um, they're not going to be charging you a, uh, a surplus because they can't make any sense of your of your information. And for me, that makes me feel like, like everything, I'm trying to protect that time to write, you know. So I try and reduce the number of decisions I have to make about anything. And this is just another way that I can reduce the number of decisions I have to make. And I can just get to writing or get to doing that thing that I enjoy. So, so do that. I mean, this is something you, you have to do. I, you know, we talk about not being prescriptive in 20 books all the time, but I would say figuring out how to pay your taxes effectively is something that you must do, (laughs) or you have to pay someone to do it. So you can, you can choose there, but it has to be done. Um, Because the thing is, if you don't set up these systems, when you're, not making a lot of money, it's going to be that much harder to do it when you are making money. And especially if you go, you know, if you want to make that transition to full time where this is your livelihood, then you have to get this stuff squared away because, you know, everything, your family's going to depend on this or just you personally, you can't make decisions about your future if you don't know how much money you have or, you know, what's coming in and what's going out. So, so I really recommend you do this. I mean, if I could go back and throttle myself in 2009, <laughs> this. A, I would probably tell myself, don't start the distillery. Um, just, just get a still in your backyard. Don't, don't tell anybody about it. It'll be all right. Um, you can tell people, you know, a legal distiller, um, James Aaron, (laughs) but anyway, um, that's the one thing I would really want to, you know, just do your accounting properly and life will be that much easier. You have like maybe, you know, an, like today, even to reconcile the whole year was one day of pain. I, I'll deal with that. You know, I'll pay that price. So that's that. That was kind of what I wanted to say about that. Um, I'm really. I'll, I'll do some updates on it going forward. On if I think QuickBooks is easier or hard. It, it looked like it was relatively simple for what I need to do with it. So um, if I need to talk about it, or I think that you know you might benefit from hearing about it, I will definitely uh, let you know. So if you have not done that for last year, I definitely recommend that you set some time aside and, you know, again, don't say I'm going to work on my taxes, say I am going to reckon, you know, I'm going to go through my Amazon account and annotate everything that was book related, you know, or writing related. And there's a ton of stuff that you might not think was writing related that actually is. So that, that was also something that was kind of, uh, interesting to me. Um, and I would say, you know, there was a tip I had about basically being able to go to your account and download all everything that you bought. But I think it's just easier to go to the orders tab and search by year. And also, don't forget to search the digital orders because um, there's it'll show you initially like just your physical things that you bought. But then there's all the digital things that you bought, which is going to be software and subscriptions and, you know, stuff like that that might have... Um, slipped your mind. So I found some stuff in there that I'd kind of forgotten about. I've, I've really tried to dial in on those things, but, um, I also saw that in Patreon, I have, I've spent more money over time in Patreon. I've managed to keep it at 30 bucks a month, but I started with $8. <laughs> so I guess I'm a, I'm a believer in Patreon. Um, but I do like giving a lot of people, you know, a dollar each. That's something I, I'll, I, there's a few people I give five bucks, but I like the idea of giving lots of people, um, you know, a little bit. So I think that's more sustainable for them if they can get more people involved. So, so anyway, um, let me know if you have any questions or anything I can help with on that. Um, I also signed up for Joe Solari's basic business class and I'm really looking forward to that. It's a bunch of videos, at least initially. So I'm going to have to, I have to make time to watch those videos, but I will be reporting back on, uh, how that works for me. I do enjoy his podcast quite a bit. So I'll put in, uh, a link to that in the show notes because I think it's uh, it's pretty useful from a business perspective and he for writers and he represents and works with a lot of high performing authors so I haven't had the opportunity to talk with a business advisor slash accountant like him who's specifically focused on authors and author um, concerns so I definitely recommend checking his his channel out 
Okay, so goals for next week. Uh, I really want to continue the streak with the writing on Lunar Crisis. I'm moving into the last third of the book, and so things are speeding up. It feels good. Uh, I want to get through uh, this, this last bit of it, and then I'm going to go back, and I've got some side characters to clean up, but I will have everything ready you know, by the end of the month when it's time to hand it off to Michael. So I'm pretty excited about that. Uh Email newsletter. Let's see if we can make that happen. I again, I'm being wishy-washy about this, um, you know, that goal. If I was going to like actually make it happen, I would say on Thursday night I will send out an email newsletter, and maybe that's what I will do. <laughs> uh, speaking of making appointments to make things happen, I actually have an appointment on Tuesday uh, with a local person that wants some help starting a podcast. So I'm going to show them how to set things up in Audacity and how I do things. Uh, with just the basic little bit of things that I do. And so that's kind of fun. Um, I love the idea of like just helping people. I'd like to do more classes and things like that if if I can only clone myself and, and have more time. But I'll let you know how, how that goes. Uh, like I mentioned last week, if it's possible, I would love to get to 100 subscribes on the YouTube channel so I can update the name on that dumb thing. So I'll put the link in the show notes. If you get a second, um, please like hop over to... YouTube and just subscribe to my channel so I can give it a name and it won't just be, you know, gobbledygook uh, URL. So anyway, um, I think that's everything for this week. Thanks very much for listening and I will see you next week. Until then, happy writing.